Hello everyone. Welcome to this Hangout on Air featuring Google Map Engine creating rich and dynamic maps. My name is Christina Mondini and I am a uh, Google Program Manager on our community team for Google Enterprise. Just a reminder to everyone watching us live to please provide your questions in the comment section of this post and if we have time at the end we'll answer it in a Q&A. With that, kick it off Dylan. All right, well thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Dylan Lorimer. I'm on the product team at Google, and I focus on bringing our consumer geospatial technologies, Google Earth and Google Maps, into everyday business and government and, and enterprise use. And I'm specifically the product manager for our new geospatial cloud platform called Google Maps Engine, which is what we're here to talk about today. So thanks again for, uh, for having me. Okay, I'm just transitioning slides here, so it should show up. Uh, so at this point, there is just huge consumer adoption of our mapping uh, technology. Almost a million websites embed uh, Google Maps, embed the, the Google Maps on their sites themselves. We announced last year in, uh, in Q4 our billionth download of the Google Earth client. And Google Maps is one of the uh, number one online mapping portals in the world. There is a number one mapping portal in the world in most uh, countries. So there's just huge consumer adoption of our products. And with that adoption comes effectively uh, geo-literacy for all. Virtually everyone knows how to interact with a map when it comes to you know, encountering one on, on a website. And, and similarly, you know, our users know that when they see a push pin on a map, for instance, they can click that push pin and they get uh, a pop-up balloon with information about that feature in the balloon. Huge amount of geo-literacy, and it's a result of just all this, this use of our, our mapping products. And really that just lays this foundation upon which uh, we can begin to bring uh, mapping and mapping technology really into sort of everyday uh, business, business uses. And, you know, what's interesting is we've been in the enterprise geospatial business uh, for about six or seven years now since, uh, since acquisition of, of Keyhole back in the day. And since that time, we've seen um, really, really amazing use of our technology, our geospatial technology, uh, across different, different aspects of, of business and government. So everything from the canonical sort of store locator where users go to a website and they may see a map and they may try to search for uh, businesses that are open between kind of 9 a.m. and 10 p.m. or within a certain distance from a point on the map. That's sort of at one end of the spectrum. All the way to uh, kind of disaster response and humanitarian response type uses of our, of our mapping technology. Real, real mission critical uses where the maps are critical to the response effort or the, you know, maybe the preparedness effort and everything in between. So just tons of use of our, of our mapping uh, products. But uh, the, the reality is that for, for organizations that have their own mapping data, it's still pretty hard or it has been pretty hard to use that data and kind of display it on a, on a Google map. Certainly we have the Google Maps API, which was a, is a JavaScript API that makes it you know, pretty easy to programmatically put, put your content, your points and your lines and your markers and so forth on a map. But that requires development and, and coding expertise. And if you have a lot of other data, like maybe you have your own imagery or you want to take uh, topographic maps and put them on Google Maps, or maybe you have kind of more complex or, or dense data sets, it's really difficult to combine those with Google Maps. Uh, it, would, it would typically involve kind of a costly investment uh, uh, in existing on-premise uh, geospatial technology, would require a lot of specialist training, and in general it's just a difficult task to, uh, to do. But, the thing is that Google has built a lot of great technology that we use to build our consumer maps, right? We've built uh, the capability to, to, to store and manage geospatial data of all types, and we've built uh, imagery processing at scale, and we've built uh, map, re map tile rendering at, at scale. And so, you know, we wanted to make it possible for all of our, our business and enterprise customers to take advantage of all of this geospatial technology. And, and fundamentally, we want to make it very easy for anyone, uh, anyone including those with no background or experience in, in GIS or geospatial, to build a map. And so we built uh, a product called Google Maps Engine to help with that. We launched Google Maps Engine earlier this year, 
And it's, it's Google's geospatial cloud platform. And its purpose is to make it simple and easy and intuitive and, and fun, frankly, for anyone to be able to upload their data to Google's cloud and build their own maps with it. And this is a screenshot from the actual product. This is the map kind of creation and, and styling interface. And it really is sort of a visual approach, uh, uh, kind of a, a, a visual approach to creating uh, maps for your, your audience. Google Maps Engine is truly built for mapping data and, and geospatial data. And so a lot of the difficulty in working with geospatial data is that it comes in sometimes esoteric uh, file formats, or sometimes it's in uh, kind of different coordinate systems or projections, or basically it's difficult to, to display on a map. And so Google Maps Engine takes care of all the heavy lifting for you. You simply just upload your data to Google's cloud, and we do all the work to make it mappable for viewing uh, on Google Maps or in Google Earth. When Today, if you were to go to maps.google.com and search for, uh, for restaurants in New York City, for instance, you would see thousands and thousands of, of, of red markers on the map indicating the locations of those restaurants. The, the, the markers on the map are tiles that are generated on the fly based on the query. And basically, your query is entered, and then we, uh, we pass that query on to a back-end index and data store. And based on the result, we can render these tiles. That technology, the on-the-fly tile rendering, is provided to you with Google Maps Engine for use with your own data. So in this example uh, that you see, these are polygons over Portland, Oregon. And the polygons are, uh, are vegetation areas in the city. And using the same rendering technology, you can choose how your, your polygons or any of your data should look and feel to your users. In this case, there are some advanced uh, criteria or rules applied to the data. Where the polygon is of a type herbaceous, it's red. Where it's type uh, forest, it's green. And when it's woodland, it's, made, uh, it's rendered yellow. You have push button control over that. And in addition, you can choose what your users see when they interact with the data. If they click it, you know, they get a pop-up balloon or an info window, as we call them here. And you can choose what the contents of those info windows are so that you choose how your users kind of see and interact with your data. You can also leverage Google's imagery processing at scale with Google Maps Engine. So you can actually upload images you might have, be they satellite images or aerial photography, or even building floor plan or other raster data. You can upload it to Maps Engine, and at the push of a button, access thousands of CPUs across Google's fleet to, to turn the, the images into a set of tiles, a set of blended, you know, feathered and masked tiles that you can then display on top of uh, Google's base map. And that's really the key thing, is that you can publish your imagery uh, and it can sit right on top of Google. So you can kind of augment uh, Google's base map for your users with your own, your own data. Maps Engine uh, lets you, gives you complete control over who can access the maps that you create. So you can, uh, you can create maps, and then you can share them with your users use, using the power of Google's common sharing infrastructure. You can share them with individuals or groups of individuals with their Google accounts or even with the public at large. You can make your content available to, to anyone who can discover it. When you, when you publish maps with Maps Engine, you don't actually choose if you're building a map for use within uh, on a mobile platform or, or the web or, or Google Earth or even an API. We actually uh, uh, expose the content through all of those channels. And so literally, you can push button publish your maps right into the hands of all billion you know, plus Google Earth users because the, the free Google Earth client that anyone can download has uh, Maps Engine integration built in. Also, the, the Google Earth client on, on Android and iOS has that capability. And we have a rich set of developer APIs so that you can build custom applications on top of your data. These are uh, our APIs that are part of the Maps API suite, which, uh, which are, are very intuitive to use and, and a lot of familiarity with, uh, with an industry. For the maps that you choose to make public, 
we also uh, can help you surface those for the entire world you know, to discover, or at least the entire internet. Uh, maps Engine has uh, a new capability that lets you list those maps or nominate those to be listed in the Google Earth Gallery, which is a, a Google web property where we surface all kinds of authoritative maps from our, our Maps Engine customers. And so in this screenshot, you see it's a, it's a submission process. You can build a map and then nominate it to be listed, and you can you know, give the map a name and a description and, and define some attribution and other, other uh, metadata. And then you can actually publish it, and it will be listed right in the, uh, the Google Earth uh, Gallery. And the Google Earth Gallery is a web property that, that anyone can go to today, and they can get a like an embedded view of the map and your, your publisher information and, and other kinds of metadata get surfaced in it. And there are even snippets for, for use of that map to embed it in, in, some, in your website or, or to access through APIs. The, the, real, the real thought here is that we want to help a lot of our Maps Engine customers, some of which are, for instance, governments who want to publish maps out to their, you know, to their constituents. We want to help you surface your maps across the web. And so one place is this Google Earth Gallery, and, uh, and we want to help surface them across other, other Google properties. The power of Maps Engine is that it exposes a lot of our, our consumer geospatial infrastructure, from the data processing to the rendering to the serving. And so we're, uh, we're also, we announced this at Google I.O. earlier this year, we're in the process of, uh, of testing a number of, trusted testing, a number of APIs to Maps Engine that let developers build all kinds of rich applications on our platform that leverage, leverage Google's cloud. Um, and so this is a screenshot of an application built by uh, our partner in Vista, who we're going to take over uh, in a minute on this Hangout. And the idea here is that based on uh, a user's identity, uh, this is a utilities management application typically used by city governments. Based on the user's identity within that city, when they log in, certain layers are made available to them. And those layers, in this case, represent um, kind of construction and other capital, capital investment projects going on in the city. But the APIs enable, for instance, this authenticated, uh, authenticated layers available in the app. And as users interact with those layers, they can, uh, they can get access to the attributes and, and query the data <laughs> and so forth. And so lots of APIs available, or an API available for Maps Engine to really enable a partner ecosystem to, uh, to build geo-enabled applications. And I was just going to show uh, a quick demo or two before I uh, pass this over to, uh, to Mark Fagan from uh, Invista, who's uh, one of our close partners. And the first one is, let's see if this loads here. And the first one is a map that was published just a few weeks ago during Hurricane Isaac. So this is a public-facing map that uh, the Google Crisis Response Team published with a bunch of relevant mapping content to help inform the crisis response uh, effort uh, during the hurricane. And what's unique about this map is if I zoom in, you see that uh, there's a bunch of imagery that's displayed on this map. I'm going to zoom in a couple more times here. So these images are actually being served by Google Maps Engine and they were uploaded by one of our government customers who use Maps Engine. So one of our customers uploaded all these images which were flown by, by, uh, by different aerial imagery providers during the event, uploaded to this Maps Engine account, processed using uh, Maps Engine infrastructure, and then published directly to this, this application for the whole world you know, to see, essentially. And so this is a great example of how um, you know, governments can use Maps Engine to help get their mission critical content out to the web for both you know public consumption, but also optionally authenticated uh, use. I had just one other uh, quick demo, and that's uh, this is a map. Actually, let me just close this. So this is uh, the David Suzuki uh, Foundation, which are a, a nonprofit organization based up in uh, in in uh, Vancouver, and they have a map. Uh, showing grizzly mortality in the Great Bear uh, Rainforest in, uh, in Canada. And this is a map they built with Google Maps Engine. They uploaded uh, data sets pertaining to grizzly bear deaths over the years, as well as data sets that show the, the extent or the boundary 
of this uh, Coastal First Nations uh, territory. And so you can see that I can zoom in. It's a fully interactive map embedded on their blog. And you can even interact with it. So I can click a point. And, and they've chosen that, you know, when I click that point, this content uh, should appear in that info window. Uh, so this is an, embed an example of an embeddable map in the web. And if there were to be huge spikes in traffic, if a lot of people tried to look at this map, the Google Maps engine infrastructure would just scale to continue to, to serve that map uh, effortlessly. So with that, I'm going to uh, pass this over. Let me just uh, see here. OK, with that, I'm going to pass this over to Mark Fagan. Let's see, is that working? Great. Mark Fagan, who's the uh, uh, Executive Vice President of Invista. Mark, over to you. Great. Thanks, Dylan. Um, I'm going to quickly talk about, the, in general, what the, our platform and product is. Um, and presently, the name of the product is, is Iris. And uh, we're uh, branding it with the term uh, of business services for Google Maps Engine. Um, and, and basically, the problem set that we're trying to solve for customers, and what we've been hearing from customers, is um, that they have a wealth of information related business as well as geospatial data um, spread across their systems. They're typically very disparate sets of data. And the second thing we've heard is that um, within these systems, access to the data and or applications is, is limited to experts who um, and the third component we've understood from customers is that um, these systems are typically premise-based systems that weren't designed to take advantage of the new technologies of the web. And so wants and needs, if you will, that we've learned from the customers is they very much could solve business problems that they never could before if they had methods to combine um, both these business systems data as well as GIS data. Um, and as well, have the ability to publish what we call curated views of the data to much wider audiences. Uh, this solves this problem of uh, application being accessed only by experts in the systems. And then the third thing um, we've heard from our customers related to these points is that, um, again, they could solve a, a wealth of different business problems if they could actually combine this data and then um, build on top of that uh, work processes, which I'm about to describe. So. Um, what we're terming this to be is, is a platform as a service, again, um, working on top of the Maps Engine. And, and what we're all about is leveraging what we call the current knowledge infrastructure with customers. And that's your data, your applications, and what's in people's heads, uh, your applications, if you will. And um, what we do is we actually have um, 24 different uh, um, business services, as, as we term them. And um, from just a messaging standpoint, we've reduced those uh, to, to five sort of general terms. And so the first one is what we call fusing data. And that's the ability to take all of these disparate data sets, put them up in Maps Engine, and be able to um, create, if you will, through business rules, um, integration of those data sets. Um, then based on that type of integration of those data sets, we uh, use the term analyze. And that's the ability to uh, do data queries and to create uh, intersections, if you will, of the, the data to actually affect these different uh, business processes. Uh, the third component that we have is workflow. And th that is basically we support business processes uh, based by enforcing these business rules to define these workflows and rule sets um, to actually um, perfect these, these basically uh, uh, work processes within organizations. Fourth point is collaborate, and this is the ability to actually um, push this information to individuals to support workflow processes or to disseminate the information to customers. And the last one is publish, and um, as Dylan was mentioning, this is the capability of publishing data, if you will, to anybody in the world down to specific individuals based on different security parameters. So those are the fundamental business services, and what I would like to do is just demonstrate um, a real-world example of some of these fundamental features. So what we're looking at here is, as I mentioned here, is, um, this is a platform as a service built on GME. It's a completely configurable program that integrates both internal and external sets of data for customers. Um, it's a platform that provides methods and controls to define services, create relationships between the services, and how the users want to see or publish the data. 
And the first example we're going to use is this is a very large um, uh, gas utility company. And um, the, the uh, requirement here is um, they need to push out to uh, over seven states um, all over the capital projects of the work that's being performed within communities. And so what you're seeing here, the first uh, uh, things I'm bringing up here is all the capital projects. Um, and this is data that actually came from disparate data sources within the organization. So in this case here, what we did the so table here is all the information that came from their existing work order management system, as well as combining the information from their GIS systems, which is the location of the pipe data. So two disparate systems with different data types in them, combining that information to then uh, push out to the public, in this case here, as I click on each one of these different projects, um, the summary information about this capital project. So the public can go to a website and actually um, be informed about where all the capital projects are. Um, we also, relative to the controls, or what you can see within the system is, I just mentioned, this is being pushed out to the public, if you will. Um, we have another version of this where we actually do direct um, uh, notifications to public information officers and municipal uh, managers uh, with more specific information about the capital project, not necessarily information that the public needs to know, but uh, what a municipal officer needs to know. So it's another set of data, more detailed, if you will. And a, another example, the third one is in the call centers of this uh, company, um, up until this point, it was very hard for them to understand what capital projects were occurring in the neighborhood when somebody called up and said, what's my this truck doing here? And uh, so there's even a third set of data that's private to the data center, the call centers, um, uh, that has much more specific information um, to disseminate um, to the public, if you will. Um, and then another use case that we're going to quickly demonstrate, it has to do with um, gas transmission pipelines. And so in this case here, again, coming and taking from a GIS uh, files, we have the standard lines of various transmission lines. And um, then within our system here, uh, we ba basically created a series of 1,000-foot buffers around those transmission lines. And then we identified all what we call the uh, points of interest. Um, points of interest typically um, have to do with what is called high consequence areas, which are typically schools or hospitals, um, facilities that are hard to evacuate in the event of an incident. And um, we actually converted some of these um, points of interest into what we call high consequence areas. So. As I turn these on and off, um, you can see that there's specific information here um, that is accessible through our platform and Maps Engine. And this has to do primarily with uh, mitigating issues with respect to uh, any incident that happens with a transmission line or a distribution line, if, if you will. Um, so again, this is uh, information that's coming from multiple disparate sources, different systems, uh, both internal and external. Um, and as well, just to evidence that um, I'm just going to quickly show um, that we contrast, if you will, uh, imagery from GOI in this case, who's a partner of uh, ours and Google's. And um, what we can do is contrast the, the imagery against uh, where the buffers are of the um, transmission lines in order to see if there's an encroachment of someone either building structures or, or, or some kind of construction activity. So again, this is a example of a sort of a safety mitigation program. Um, but is the point here being in all this presentation is um, that uh, there's a whole host of different business problems that can be solved by the combination of people's existing data that they've already made a huge investment in um, that solve important business processes and um, our platform is about supporting those processes and, and it is all powered through Maps Engine and with all the extent of the imagery when you talk about all this information being uh, presented across seven, seven states, if you will. And of course, the other components with Maps Engine you get is everything from just, uh, you know, uh, what's happening with Street View associated with this, um, to searches in the Google Maps, um, those types of things. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to turn it back over uh, to uh, Christian. Hey there. All right. Well, thank you both for, for sharing this information with us. I, I learned a lot. Um, let's uh, look over and see if we have any questions from our comment section. Uh, here, David wants to know, um, Dylan, this is directed at you, uh, what, what does the pricing look like for Google Map Engine? Yeah, so Google Maps, the, the goal for Google Maps Engine pricing 
was to keep it as, as simple as possible. It's a very powerful cloud-based platform, uh, but we really wanted to expose just a few kind of pricing levers. So what we, how we price it is that we, we charge for the quantity of data, kind of the hosting of your data in Google's cloud and the processing of it. And then we separately charge for the quantity of serving. And by serving, I mean the sort of tiles that are streamed out through our APIs or the read and write, read and write queries that happen you know, through our APIs and so forth. Uh, so it's quantity of data and serving. And the pricing aligns almost perfectly with, uh, with the Google Maps API for business. OK. Um, and so we have a question from Mark. He's asking if GME supports um, OGC standards for pulling in map services. Uh, that's a great question. So uh, we today we actually support OGC services for publishing uh, map services. So I didn't I didn't actually go into all the different kinds of endpoints on your data, but effectively every data set you upload to GME is made immediately available through uh, Maps API for kind of uh, tile based rendering. We have a RESTful API that we are trusted testing right now, which does read and write queries. You can get to the content through Google Earth for desktop, Google Earth for mobile. Uh, we have embeddable map kind of widgets that I think I demoed. And then lastly, we support today uh, WMS uh, 1.3, which is uh, part of the OGC suite. And we are actively working on, we're basically committed to the more widely used uh, open geospatial uh, protocols. So uh, in our minds right now, that's uh, WFS and WMTS or TMS. I always forget which way it is. Uh, I, I guess just for a little more color on that, you know, we, we have a lot of government customers. This is not just meant for governments. We tend to have a lot because governments tend to have their own mapping data. And we know that it's real important to, uh, to support these open standards for true interoperability. So we're, we're real committed to that. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, so we're actually running out of time. Uh, we do have a few questions uh, left over. So what we'll do is we'll post them in our recap post um, in a day or two. On this recap post, we're going to provide uh, the link to the recording. I uh, just want to thank everyone for watching us live, and uh, thank you, Dylan and Mark, for joining us and, and sharing uh, Google Map Engine and Iris with us. Sure thing. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.